Hey, it's your friend Choice CJ here, and I'm coming to you guys with my week 7 battle of the UPC. We are going up against our good buddy Kyle, aka a potato farmer. <laughs> uh, living out in the uh, in the lands of Iowa and stuff. I don't think he actually lives in Iowa. I'm pretty sure he lives in Texas. But that's definitely where potato country is, so we'll act like Kyle's alter ego is living in Iowa. In any case, he's the coach of the Mesquite Mess Brits, and he is our opponent. Now, uh, just a few hours, minutes, I don't know exactly. Uh, sometime before this, on this day, I also uploaded my week six battle versus the Flying Burb. And uh, I put them both up on the same day just because uh, I was on vacation and uh, didn't have time to put them up at the appropriate time. So you're going to get two UPC battles this week. So before you watch this battle, definitely go check that one out because uh, it was a really close battle, really fun and exciting, really dramatic. Um, I'm not doing a team builder for this battle. Uh, I'll just quickly run down on Kyle's team, and I'll probably put a little picture or something on the screen that gives you his roster. He has Jirachi, Landorus T, Muk, uh, Alola of Muk, that is, uh, Darmanitan, Kiram, Rotomo, Dodrio, Mesprit, Conkeldur, Kabutops, and Mega Gyarados. So, um, as you can see, he's chosen to bring Dodrio, Kabutops, Jirachi, Kiram, Conkeldur, and Landorus. And uh, I'm really relieved to see that he didn't bring a few of his Pokemon. Uh, Darmanitan was a huge threat to my team, and it was his best way of dealing with, dealing with Celesteela. Uh, I figured he wouldn't bring Rotom Mo because Rotom Mo has a really bad matchup versus me. I have Latias, which resists, resists both his stab. Tapu Bulu resists both its stabs. I've got four Pokemon that are immune to electric moves. Uh, it just didn't make a lot of sense. So, like, that would have been one day way for him to deal with Celesteela. So, Dorian was really his only other way. Or at least that's what I was initially thinking. Um, he does have Kiram, which can hit me with, you know, powerful ice moves, which I don't resist. Um, but, um, oh, hopefully you guys can hear all that traffic outside. Um, before I talk any more about his team, let me show you, let me, uh, tell you a little bit about the Pokemon that I've brought. Uh, I brought a Yachiberry Adamant Nature Tapu Bulu. Uh, Yachi Berry because it can lure in the Kiram and do good damage with superpower. It also can deal with potential Ice Punch Conkeldur. It can deal with, um, what are some of his other Pokemon? Uh, Ice Fang on Gyarados. That was the main reason I brought it. Otherwise, Tapu Bulu hardwalls Gyarados. It just has, so the, the set is just Wood Hammer, uh, Horn Leech, superpower, and Stone Edge. Uh, next up, I have a Calm Mind Megalodios. It's uh, a pretty fast Megalodios, enough speed out to be Jirachi. And uh, the rest goes into HP and Defense. It's uh, Calm Mind, Roost, Reflect Type, and Dragon Pulse. So his only resist to Dragon Stab is Jirachi, uh, which, uh, you know, it's definitely a threat, but I have other ways to deal with it potentially. But otherwise, he doesn't have a Fairy Type. He doesn't have any way to deal really well with... Uh, with dragon moves and with reflect type, I can set you know set up a reflect type on the Conkeldur or something. Not that Conkeldur can do a lot of damage to me anyway, but at least it'll make it so that none of his moves hit super effectively on me. And uh, I can use it as well on the Jirachi if I need to, like if I want to resist Iron Head or something like that. Uh, use it on Gyarados. Gyarados will be a really nice Pokemon to use reflect type on. Uh, but yeah, so that was the, st the set that I brought there. I also have a Choice Scarf Manetric, with this uh, sort of standard move set, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Overheat, and Hidden Power Ice. I wanted this to be able to revenge kill like a Dragon Dance uh, Gyarados. Uh, I wanted it to be able to hit uh, Dodrio, you know, to outspeed that. I wanted to be able to outspeed Kabutops. I don't think it outspeeds in the rain, because uh, what does Kabutops hit? It hits 284 with a Jolly Nature. So that gets it up to like 568. So I definitely don't outspeed that. But anyway, um, I also outspeed Choice Scarf Jirachi, and I can bop it with an overheat. I can outspeed Scarf Rotom Mo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also outs outspeeds Choice Scarf Dermanitan. So it just felt really nice to have that this week. Next, I have a physically defensive Rhydon with Stealth Rock, Drill Run, Rock Blast, and Ice Punch. This was my Darmanitan answer, and also can deal relatively well with the likes of Jirachi, uh, Lando, and Conkeldur. can take hits from all of those. Deals very well with Dodrio. A uh, max attack Dodrio still only does like 35% with Jump Kick to this spread. 
Uh, I went with Drill Run because I didn't want Earthquake to conflict with the Grassy Terrain. And uh, I put enough EVs into attack that, so that I would still Oko uh, a Darmanitan. Uh, next up I have a Subseed Celesteela. Because I figured he wasn't going to be bringing the Rotom, I thought a Subseed set would be really good. Uh, because yeah, his only ways to really hit me super hard are the Dermanitan and the Rotom. But uh, again, you know, the Kiram is, is going to be his best way of dealing with it offensively. Uh, so I sort of underestimated that when I designed this set. But otherwise, I think it's pretty good. We put a lot of special attack investment into this thing and I gave it Air Slash. I didn't want uh, Gyarados to be able to set up on it if it has a substitute set. So I gave it enough... Uh, special attack EVs to always break a max HP Gyarados uh, substitute with Air Slash. Um, then last but not least, I have a Life Orb bulk up Hitmonchan. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the set that I made didn't like translate into the battle, I guess. Uh, it I had a bulk up, close combat, mock punch, and ice punch, but the mock punch somehow got changed to bide, <laughs> which is like some real bullshit. Uh, it's not that's not a move that I wanted to use uh, so it it's uh, We'll see if that ends up playing a role in this battle But yeah, Hitmonchan. I just wanted a powerful priority user to be able to hit Darmanitan, to be able to hit Kiram, to be able to hit Kabutops, Dodrio, things like that So it really sucks that I didn't have the Mach Punch because that's what I really brought this for um, I originally had a Vaporeon instead of Hitmonchan because I wanted a uh, Ice Switch in but uh, do, the Vaporeon just didn't do much otherwise um, yeah, I can, like, kind of take on Kabutops, but Stone Edge still does a ton of damage. Uh, a Flare Blitz from an Adamant Choice Banded. Vaporeon is a 2 KO. So, you know, I, I just, like, okay, this isn't really walling the stuff that I wanted to wall, and it's not doing much otherwise, is it maybe passing wishes to ride on? So it's just not that important to me. Uh, but anyway, so looking at his team, um, he has a lot of physical threats, uh, like the Dodrio and the Lando and the Jirachi. Like, I was mainly expecting one of those three, so I thought Rhydon would be a good lead. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, the music started playing, so I had to cut the video. But um, we are leading with our Rhydon here, like I mentioned, and he leads with Akiram, so that's really bad. <laughs> um, because I don't have anything that can switch into this, and uh, so he literally just gets a kill here. So uh, I, I don't want to sack anything else right now. The Darmanitan didn't come, so the Rhydon's not super duper useful. It'd be nice to get up rocks, but um, I am just going to go ahead and uh, sack this right here, turn one. Uh, and he reveals the Life Orb, which is really good to know. I didn't know if it was going to be like a Spec set or a Scarf set or, or what was going to be going on. But um, I don't have anything that can Oko this. I guess I could have gone like Hitmonchan, but Hitmonchan still dies to, dies to Draco, even though it survives the Ice Beam. Um, I could have gone into Bulu, but that would have been really obvious that I was Yachi and there's gonna be no way he stayed in there. Uh, I can't kill with Dragon Pulse right now with my Lottie and uh, Manetric can't do a whole lot of damage because uh, it's best move to hit this thing is overheat and it does like 35% damage. Uh, regular Manetric is just <laughs> really weak. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna go into my Celesteela and he is going to switch on out into a Jirachi, which is fine by me because I just click Leech Seed here. I figured I could sort of stall out the Kiram if they need be. Uh, I am just going to go for the Protect, see what this Jirachi wants to do, and uh, do hit it up with the Thunderbolt. So we get two turns of Leech Seed off on this thing, which is really nice. And uh, he is going to switch on out into his Kiram. I'm going to switch into my Manetric, because uh, if he's like Choice Scarf or something, it'd be nice to get that Lightning Rod boost, uh, absorbing that Thunderbolt. But he goes to get into his Kiram. So it's sort of the same thing. It's like, okay, what do I want to try and sack here? Uh, because there's not a whole lot that I can do. Uh, so I am just going to Volt Switch on out of here because I know I'm faster. He's definitely Life Orb, and I'm Choice Scarf and Outsped. You know, I'm EV to outspeed him. I'm going to Celesteela and uh, take a crap load. And here, you know, <laughs> I'm just like, shoot, I really wish I brought Vaporeon. I really wish I had an Ice Resist because uh, this Kirim is taking lives right now. Yeah, so it did a lot of damage with the Ice Beam to my Behemoth. I figured he's just going to go for Ice Beam again. There's not really any reason for him to go for a uh, Draco Meteor. And uh, because Hitmonchan is actually really good on the special defensive side, I figure I can go into it here and uh, tank one 
ice beam if needed, and uh, I can kind of scare them out. And, you know, still tank is a term I use liberally. It doesn't really tank it, but at least it survives. And uh, he is going to be fearing my my mock punch here, but because I don't have it, I can only go for close combat. And you know, he doesn't know that. Uh, I'm I think it does like sixty percent. And um, if with my mock punch to the Kiram, so if he's thinking about that, he's not going to survive this hit. And uh, so he's going to make a play and switch out here. Because I don't have mock punch, my only play is to click close combat. And uh, I'm able to Oko this Jirachi that comes in because of the prior damage from the Leech Seed. So uh, I, I assume this thing was not defensive. It seems like it was an offensive Choice Scarf spread or something similar to that. Uh, so that's quite nice for me. Um, but now he is going to be bringing in his Dodrio. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about the beginning of this battle. Um, we, I, you know, I type good luck, have fun to, to Kyle, and he goes, if the team I built works out, this is going to be an entertaining battle. So, <laughs> um, immediately, like, the first thing that I think of is, okay, this is going to be Baton Pass Dodrio. Because that's the only thing that really makes sense that's, like, super fun on this team. And he's got a lot of Pokemon that are going to accept the Baton Pass like if he's agility or sword stance, and have it be really beneficial to him. Um, and so this is where having Mach Punch would again have been really nice, because on this first turn I can uh, go for close combat and bring him down to his sash, as you can see. Uh, but then I would have been able to go for a Mach Punch, take out this Dodrio, and uh, no shenanigans would occur. Uh, but because I'm already expecting the Baton Pass... Uh, and I think his most likely recipient is going to be the Lando. Um, he's going to Baton Pass, and I'm going to click Ice Punch uh, expecting this. Even though it uh, gets off an Intimidate on me, this is Iron Fist boosted. I'm Adamant Life Orb. That thing is not living. And, uh, you know, it wasn't defensive. So we doubled down, and uh, now we're back to a 4-4 four four position, which is not bad. So I bring in my Latias here because now that the... Uh, Jirachi is gone. I'm really thinking the Lottie can put in some work here. And he doesn't know what my set is. He, the biggest thing that he's worried about is uh, a set that has Psychic. Because it turns out he's not Assault Vest. He's actually Life Orb with Iron Fist. Maybe he has Guts, but I assume he has Iron Fist. Uh, because I don't think... I think running Life Orb with Iron Fist makes a lot more sense than Guts with Iron Fist. Um... But, you know, I'm looking at this and I say, okay, I, you know, I'm, the Kiram is in range where a Dragon Pulse can potentially kill. The, uh, the Dodrio is really weakened. Conkelder, uh, I can deal with because I have Reflect type. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do. You know, expecting his Ice Punch or Knock Off or something like that, I am going to go for the Reflect type. But he actually doubles out into the Dodrio. And, uh, I turn into a normal and flying type, which isn't, isn't really all that useful. And uh, here he goes for the Brave Bird. I go for the Dragon Pulse. Um, if you wanted to like switch out or something, Dragon Pulse would have been more useful. Um, and he sends in the Conkelder next. But um, you know, maybe a play I could have made was to go for Roost. Because that would have gotten me back to full HP. And then I'd be in a much better position to take on this Conk. But uh, as played, I'm at 60% health. I'm a normal and flying type. It doesn't really show on the screen for some reason. But it did in the battle. And, uh, yeah, now he's got this conk in here. Um, I am going to reflect type again because I know that he can hit me with a nice, powerful ice punch. Does 37%. And uh, I'm going to continue to roost, but he now shows the drain punch, and that does a ton. And uh, truth be told, I was kind of confused because, like, in my mind, it didn't process that ice punch and drain punch were two different moves. But, yeah, there's, there's no way that we're going to win this battle, I guess... I don't know what Drain Punch's PP is, but I don't think it's less than, um, I don't think it's less than Roost. So, it's unfortunately going to be a losing battle for us, especially if he eventually crits. So, I'm going to make a play into my Tabu Bulu, because I resist the Drain Punch, I am max HP, and, uh, if he somehow goes for Ice Punch instead of the Drain Punch, I do have the Yachi Berry, so no problemo. We can deal with that. And, uh, he is going to go for the Drain Punch. Doesn't do a whole lot. We get some grassy terrain recovery. And uh, yeah, <laughs> now Bulu is in here and it's in a position where it can do good damage with the wood hammer. Uh, so he's going to sack his Kabutops. Uh, like his Kinkelder would have. I don't know if it would have died. I think it would have taken like 80% or so. 
let me let me pull up the calc and uh, I'll let you guys know in just a moment. Okay, so this isn't my exact set here, but uh, I do have 252 Adamant Nature. So you can see if he's max HP, then we do minimum 81.3. So he could have survived potentially and then gone for like a poison jab or an ice punch. But he doesn't know what set I am. He could be fearing that I'm banded or something like that, yeah, which is pretty nice. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so he's not going to want to leave his Conkeldur in because it's still pretty good versus me. Uh, so he does just sack the Kabutops, which is a perfectly reasonable play. And uh, now he's got a good opportunity to go into his Kirim. Now, because this thing is Life Orb, be, even though we're Yachi Berry, max HP, we cannot live the Ice Punch, or sorry, the uh, the Ice Beam from this range. So the best play for me is to go into my Celesteela and sack it. And then that'll allow me to go back into my into my Latias and go for Dragon Pulse, because Dragon Pulse is going to kill this Kirim, and it will 2 it KO the Conkelder. So we do land a Dragon Pulse on the Kirim. And uh, now he goes into the conch. Uh, there's nothing, there's no really no reason for me to try and pivot around or do anything cute. I'm just going to sack my Latias to this Conkelder. And uh, as I showed you on that calc, the Tapu Bulu is going to be able to Oko with the Wood Hammer. Uh, so I bring it in and uh, Bulu is going to wrap up this game. So we had a couple of uh, nice Pokemon, uh, nice showcases from our Pokemon this week. Bulu getting nice kills on Kabutops and Conkelder. Him on Shan getting a kill on Landorus and Jirachi. And uh, Latias also getting two kills versus the Drew Drio and the Kiram. And uh, we're going to elevate ourselves up to a 3 and 4 record, which is not the best, but uh, it's an improvement. It's a step in the right direction. Has some games where we got pretty lucky, like versus Fallop. Has some games where we got kind of unlucky. And uh, some games where we played well, but just made like one or two misplays. Uh, so even though we're three and four, like I'm not disappointed with the way that the team is performing so far this season, and uh, I'm learning a lot about how to use all these different mods, which is a lot of fun. So anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, that's gonna do it for me. Make sure you check back to the channel for more gaming and Pokemon content. And until the next time, I'll see you guys later.